Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and very good day to everyone. Alhamdulillah, we meet again in this video today. I hope you and your family had a wonderful, happy and healthy day today. This video is made to continue our lecture on the subject MEC 451 Thermodynamics. Please note that this video is best viewed with reference to the lecture note provided. Also, please note that this subject is for UITM student for the program of EM220, Bachelor of Engineering Honours Mechanical and EM221, Bachelor of Mechanical Engineering Manufacturing Honours. However, I do welcome everyone who would like to watch this video to learn something about the thermodynamic that could benefit your general knowledge as well as your daily life dealing with the thermodynamic system. This is a lecture on chapter 6, part 2, which is focusing on the steam turbine engine or also known as the vapor power cycle. I hope that this video will benefit your academic grade as well as your daily life dealing with the thermodynamic system. The outline of this chapter 6 part 2 which is under the main topic of the thermal power plant is presented in this slide. Basically, for this topic, we have 5 main parts which are the first one is the Rankine cycle and we focus for the ideal cycle for the vapor power cycle. Then we follow by the deviation of the actual Rankine cycle from the idealized one due to the irreversibility factor in the steam turbine engine. And then we will increase the efficiency of the Rankine cycle and we will look at the one method which is the reheating of the Rankine cycle. Finally, we will learn a little bit about the regenerative Rankine cycle which consists of the open feed water heater and the closed feed water heater. Okay, let us discover the second type of this engine in this topic which is the steam turbine engine. Let us start this chapter by introduction to the steam power plant. Basically, a steam power plant or known as thermal power station is a power plant in which the prime mover is a steam driven. That means the working fluid for this type of engine is the water that changing its phase from liquid to mixture to superheated and vice versa. Recall that the three engine cycle that we have learned previously, the auto cycle, the diesel cycle, and the Breton cycle are using air as the working fluid. This steam turbine engine is using water as the working fluid. Referring to the schematic diagram provided in this slide, the basic principle of the steam power plant only consists of two main components. The first one is the boiler. The second one is the steam turbine. Basically, the water will be inserted into the boiler and the boiler will change the phase of the water from the compressed liquid into the superheated. The superheated steam is then transferred into the steam turbine and this steam turbine will convert the energy from the uh, steam into the kinetic energy. Then that power will be connected into the electrical generator to produce the electricity for the domestic as well as industrial usage. So basically, this is just a basic principle of the steam turbine engine. 
The photograph provided in this slide is showing the Connaught Bridge Power Station which is located in the Klang, Malaysia. So, if you have the time, you may visit this Connaught Bridge Power Station to learn uh, the actual system of the steam power plant. Based on the Connaught cycle, the steam turbine engine is under the family of the heat engine and it may be composed of the four main components. The first one is the pump where the function of the pump is to increase the pressure of the water. The second component is the boiler where the function of the boiler is change the phase of the water from compressed liquid to the superheated. Then the third component is the turbine where the function of the turbine is to convert the energy from the steam to the kinetic energy in the form of rotating shaft. And finally, the fourth component which consists in the steam turbine engine is the condenser where the function of the condenser is to convert the steam or the working fluid into the compressed liquid so that it can be pumped back into the system. Based on that, we can derive four main processes for the steam turbine engine under the Carnot cycle. The first one we can see here, this is state number one to state number two. So from state number one to state number two, we call it isentropic compression in the compressor. So this is state number three. So from state two to state number three, the process is the isothermal heat addition process in the boiler. And this is state number four from state 3 to state 4, this is what we call the isentropic expansion in the turbine. Finally, from state 4 to state 1, this is what we call isothermal heat rejection in the condenser. Based on that, we can derive what we call the basic concept of the Carnot cycle. It start from the high heat source, which is in this case, high heat source we refer to the heat addition in the boiler and then uh, it will transfer into the heat engine so this is our heat engine generally heat engine is basically all of the system okay then finally it will produce what we call the power output which is power output referring to the output from the turbine and then we have what we call heat sink here. So this heat sink we refer to what we call heat rejection in the condenser. So uh, for the analysis of the steam turbine engine, we normally use TS diagram. So in this case, we prefer TS diagram rather than the PV diagram. As you can see in this TS diagram, basically this is the phase changes process diagram, which is this is area of the compressed liquid. So this area is basically the superheated steam and this area basically what we call the mixture. So process 1 to 2 is here and then this is what we call isentropic compression in the uh, sorry this is in the pump so this is isentropic compressor in the sorry isothermal heat addition in the boiler and this is isentropic expansion in the turbine and then this is basically isothermal heat rejection in the condenser so from this one we can derive what we call the thermal efficiency of the cycle we know that for the Carnot cycle, every thermal efficiency is based on the work net divided by the Q in. So we know that work net is equal to Q in minus Q out. Then we can rearrange the efficiency of the Carnot cycle as 1 minus Q out over Q in. So for the Carnot cycle, the ratio of heat is equal to the ratio of the temperature. Then we can write down that the efficiency of the Carnot cycle as 1 minus TL over TH. Okay, so in this slide, there is a one what we call mistake, whereas this is not a compressor. So basically, please remove this one. This is not compressor. This is basically a pump. So this is a 
bump. So please do make a correction in your slide. We know that the Carnot cycle is the most efficient cycle operating between two specified temperature limit, but it is not a suitable model for the power cycle. That is because of three main reasons based on its processes. So when we see process 1 to 2 that is based on this what we call TV diagram so refer to this T sorry refer to this TS diagram this is the process 1 to 2 so based on the TS diagram provided in this slide it is the process of the heat transfer into the system the Carnot cycle will limit the heat transfer process to two phases system severely. This is actually limiting the maximum temperature that can be used in the cycle. We know that based on the property table, the critical temperature of the water at one atmospheric pressure is actually 374 degrees Celsius. Hence, it limit the maximum temperature that can be used in the cycle. So now we refer to process 2 to 3. So this is the process 2 to 3 in this TS diagram. So it is actually the expansion of the steam in the turbine based on this TS diagram provided. The turbine cannot handle steam with high moisture content because of the impingement of the liquid droplet on the turbine blade that will causing the erosion and wear to the turbine blade. Finally, we can see here, so this is process uh, 4 to 1. Okay, so it is actually the pumping process of the water into the boiler. Basically, it is not practical to design a pump that handle two phases of the liquid. We have learned that the pump is only designed to increase the power of the incompressible fluid like water only. For the incompressible fluid, we, sorry, for the compressible fluid, we will use the compressor. Thus, pump and compressor could not be used two phases of the fluid. So, if we can see the figure TS diagram, okay, here. So, in figure B, it is not suitable since it requires isentropic uh, pumping to extremely high pressure and isothermal heat transfer at variable pressures. Therefore, uh, the basic principle or the basic concept of the Carnot cycle is not really suitable to be used as a uh, steam power plant. Many of the impracticalities that associated with the Carnot cycle can be eliminated by superheating the steam in the boiler and condensing it completely in the condenser. The cycle that result from this elimination of the impracticalities that is associated with the Carnot cycle is what we call the Rankine cycle which is the ideal cycle for the vapor power plant. Vapor power plant means the working fluid is changing its phase from liquid to mixture to superheated and vice versa. The Rankine cycle or also known as the Rankine vapor cycle is the process that is widely used by power plant such as coal fire power plant or nuclear reactor power plant. In this Rankine cycle, a fuel is used to produce heat within a boiler and then converting water into steam which is then expand through a turbine to produce a useful work. As you can see in this slide for the schematic diagram, we have pump here. The pump will uh, pump the water into the boiler. Then heat is added into the boiler. 
then the phase of the water in the boiler will change from the compressed liquid into superheated steam. Then this superheated steam is transferred to the turbine and it will change its energy into the kinetic energy in terms of the rotating shaft. So this rotating shaft will be coupled to the uh, sometime gearbox and sometime to the what we call generator. Then uh, the steam, the exit from the turbine will go into the condenser and it will cool down inside the condenser and finally the output of the working fluid from the condenser is just what we call compressed liquid and it will pump it back uh, by using pump to uh, circulate the water back into the system. This process basically has been developed in 1859 by Scottish engineer named William J. M. Rankine so that the Rankine cycle got the name from its inventor. For this cycle, William J. M. Rankine has applied the basic consideration in the analysis of the power cycle. Recall that the basic consideration in the analysis of the power cycle consists of the first one the cycle does not involve any friction therefore the working fluid does not experience any pressure drop as it flow in pipes or devices such as heat exchanger number two all expansion and compression processes will take place in a quasi equilibrium manner and finally for the analysis of the power cycle based on the basic consideration so the pipe connecting the various components of a system are well insulated and heat transfer through them is negligible so also at the boiler william j m rankine has assumed that the combustion process is replaced by a heat addition process from an external source. Similarly, at the condenser, the heat loss is assumed to be replaced by a heat rejection process that restores the working fluid to its initial state. Thus, the uh, Rankine cycle can be presented in the TS diagram here. So this is the TS diagram for the uh, ideal cycle for the vapor cycle. So this is state uh, process 1 to 2. So basically this process is referred to the pumping process here. So this is basically process 1 to 2, isentropic compression in the pump. Okay, then this is process number 2 to 3. Okay, so now as you can see in this graph, from uh, this position, let me clear up a little bit. So, so from this position, so from 2 to this one, so the water is exists in the form of compressed liquid. From here to here, the water it exists in the form of mixture. And from here to here, the water it exists in the superheated steam. So that in this case, so the process from 2 to 3. So process 2 to 3 from here to here. So basically, this is the process of constant pressure heat addition process in the boiler. That means it will refer to the process in the boiler. As you can see, this is the constant pressure process. Okay, so state number 3 and state number 2, the pressure is similar. So, that's what we call the function of the boiler to change the phase of the water from uh, compressed liquid into the mixture and into the superheated steam. So, this is the process from 2 to 3, constant pressure heat addition. So, also in this TS diagram, as you can see, so, the process, next process is basically process 3 to 4. So, process 3 to 4 referring to the what we call uh, the turbine which is 
3 to 4 isentropic expansion in the turbine. So what we have in the uh, isentropic expansion in turbine is the work output. And finally, we do have what we call the process 4 to 1 where the process 4 to 1 from here is basically referring to the condenser. So this is basically constant pressure heat rejection in the condenser. So this is what we call the ideal cycle for the vapor power cycle. This is the energy analysis of the ideal Rankine cycle. In general, we have done all of the analysis for the component involved in this Rankine cycle, which are pump, boiler, turbine, and condenser in chapter 4. Nonetheless, let us review them back. Okay, process 1 to 2, this is basically isentropic compression in the pump. So, if you can see the schematic diagram, so this is the schematic diagram of the process 1 to 2, isentropic compression in the pump. So, the pump work can be determined by, based on the energy balance equation, finally, we can get the work pump is equal to M dot V1 P2 minus P1 or this is also equal that M dot H2 minus H1. So basically this is isentropic compression in the pump. So for the process 2 to 3 which is constant pressure heat addition process, this is a core at the boiler as you can see here. The water goes into the boiler as a, satur, a compressed liquid. Then the heat is transferred into the boiler. Then the water exit in the boiler in the form of superheated steam. Okay, so based on the energy uh, energy balance equation, we can get that the rate of the heat input to the system is equal to m dot multiplied by h3 minus h h2. <coughs> Basically, the heat input to the system is equal to the Q uh, dot boiler. So, where Q dot boiler is equal to efficiency of the boiler multiplied by the mass of the fuel multiplied by the calorific value of the uh, fuel that being used into the system. So, basically, this is the constant pressure heat addition process. The next process is process 3 to 4 or it also known as the isentropic expansion in the turbine. So basically the superheated steam goes into the turbine and it will produce the work output in terms of rotating shaft. Okay. So from this one, we know that the work output from the turbine is equal to M dot multiplied by H3 minus H4. Okay, so from this one, we can calculate the work output from the turbine. So finally, process 4 to 1, which is the constant pressure heat rejection in a condenser. So we also use the energy balance for the condenser. We know that the energy balance for the condenser is equal to Q dot out or the uh, rate of heat rejection is equal to M dot multiplied by H4 minus H1. So uh, the other one we have to understand that the Q that has been rejected inside the system is equal to the Q condenser where the Q condenser we have learned in chapter 4 mass of the cooling water multiplied by the uh, calorific value of the cooling water multiplied by the change of the temperature in the system. So this is what we call the schematic diagram of the condenser. Okay, so basically, so if you can see here, so this is what we call the Q inlet, sorry, water in, so this is water out. Okay, so water out, so based on these two, we can get what we call the T out minus T, T in. So that is how we do the analysis for the constant pressure heat rejection in the condenser. So based on the second law, the thermal efficiency will become work net 
over q in so uh, similarly it become h3 minus h4 minus h2 minus h1 divided by h3 minus h h2 so we can see this one later in the example this is a sample problem 6.5 in this sample problem I will explain about the example regarding to the ideal Rankine cycle. Okay, the first one, let us read the question. The question said, consider a steam power plant operating on the simple ideal Rankine cycle. Okay, alright. First, we have to understand what is mean by simple. Simple mean for the schematic diagram, we have one pump. We have one boiler, we have one turbine, and we have one condenser. So that's what we call simple. Okay, then the next terminology that we have to understand in the question is basically the ideal, the meaning of the ideal. So the meaning of the ideal is basically we are assume the system is working as isentropic then for the compression and expansion s1 is equal to s2 similarly basically s3 is equal to s4 so that what we uh, that what is mean by the ideal okay then Continue, read the question. It said that steam enters the turbine. So, when steam enters the turbine, so this is our turbine. So, steam enters the turbine is here. Okay, at 3 megapascal and 350 degrees Celsius. And it condenses in the condenser at pressure of 75 kilopascal. So, this is what we call the condenser. So, it must be condensed here at 75 kilo pascal. So, then the question asks us to determine the thermal efficiency of the cycle. So, based on this one, basically, we can see that. So, this is what we call the ideal PS diagram for the Rankine cycle. Where we have, this is state 1. Okay. And then state 1, normally we assume it as a saturated liquid line. So, it will compress isentropically. So, S1 is equal to S2. Then, it will change its phase into what we call the state number 3. Here, at a constant pressure of 3 MPa. Then, it will release its uh, what we call steam in the turbine. So, S3 must equal to S4 and then it will uh, reject the heat to check it face back at the 75 kilo pascal of the pressure. So this is what we call the schematic diagram and the TS diagram for the simple ideal Rankine cycle. As usual, in order to solve the problem, so we have to extract what the given information to us the first one we have the pressure at state number 3 3 mega pascal or we can call it as 3000 kilo pascal temperature t3 is equal to 350 degrees celsius please do remember for the uh, steam turbine engine or the Rankine cycle, we use water as the working fluid. Therefore, we do not need to change the temperature from degree Celsius into Kelvin. And P4 is equal to 75 kilopascal. Okay, so basically uh, the question asks us about the what is the thermal efficiency of the cycle. Based on the uh, equation of the thermal efficiency, so it is because uh, this is equal to work net divided by Q in, where we know that work net is equal to Q in minus Q out. So this is also equal to work out minus work in. Also, we know that Q in in this system, so this is Q in. In this system is equal to H3 minus H2 and Q out. So this is basically Q out is equal to H4 minus H1. 
1. So, we need to have this, we need to determine the enthalpy for all of the state in the TS diagram of the Rankine cycle. So, in order to solve this problem, we can do it based on the process involved in the Rankine cycle 1 to 1. So, in another word, what we have to do is we have to go to process by process. The first one is process 1 to 2. Then we go to process 2 to 3. And we go to the process 3 to 4. And finally, we come back to the process 4 to 1. So, this is how we solve the problem of the Rankine cycle. In the previous slide, I told you that we need to find the enthalpy uh, at each of the state in the TS diagram. So now we go to state by state. So at state number one, we have pressure 75 kilopascal. And as I uh, told you earlier, always assume state number one as a saturated liquid. So I write down here. So, always assume saturated liquid for the inlet of the pump. So, from the table A5 at 75 kilopascal, we can get H1 approximately HF is equal to 384.44 kilojoule per kilogram. So, also we can get what we call S1 approximately SF is equal to 1.2132 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin and we can get V1 or specific volume 1 approximately as VF at 0 0.001037 meter cube per kilogram. So now we have finished state number 1. Then we go to the state number 2. So we know that pressure at state number 2 is 3 megapascal or 3000 kilopascal. And S1 is equal to S, sorry, S2 is equal to S1 is equal to 1.2132 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Based on the energy balance equation we have derived previously, we know that work in pump is equal to V1 P2 minus P1. This is also equal to H2 minus H1. Then at the first one, we use this equation. Okay, then we can calculate what we call the work of the pump. So, 0 0.001037. Okay, so we can get here. And this is 3000 Kelvin. So, this is 3000 Kelvin. And uh, P2 basically, sorry, P1. So, this is P1 is basically 75 kilopascal. Here is P1. Okay, from this one, we can get the work pump in is equal to 3.033 kilojoule per kilogram. So, in order to determine the enthalpy at state 2, we also know the equation for the enthalpy is basically is equal to the work pump in is equal to H2 minus H1. So, we already calculated what we call the work pump in. So, as a 3.033, then we can put inside this equation and we can rearrange. So, we can get H2 is equal to work in pump plus H1. So, as 3.003 plus 384.44. So, we can get that the H2 is equal to 387.47 kilojoule per kilogram. So now we already have what we call enthalpy for two state. The first one is state one and second one is state two. So next we proceed uh, to the what we call the next state which is state number three. At state number 3, we know that pressure at state number 3 is 3 megapascal and temperature is 350 degrees Celsius. Then uh, from table A5 at 3000 kilopascal, we know that the T saturator is smaller than T3. So then uh, state 3 is in superheated region. When uh, we have superheated region, so we can refer to table A6 at 3 megapascal and 350 degrees Celsius. So H3 is equal to 3116.1 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin and S3 is equal to 6.745 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. So basically all the data. 
uh, we have learned in the chapter 2 properties of pure substance please refer to that chapter in order to uh, gather the data from the property table okay so far we have calculated the enthalpy at state 1 state 2 and state 3 so now we go at the state number 4 so state number 4 we know that p4 is equal to 75 kilopascal and uh, S4 is basically, sorry, this is S4. So S4 is basically equal to S3 is equal to 6.745 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Okay, from table A5 at 75 kilopascal, we can get that uh, SF is smaller than S4 is smaller than SG. Thus, this state is in a mixture region. So, when we know this is in the mixture region, then we have to determine the quality at state 4. So, which is S4 is equal to SF4 plus XSFG4. So, we, re we can rearrange this equation. So, to determine the quality at state 4. So, or we call it X4. So, X4 is equal to S4 minus SF4 divided by SFG4. So then X4 is equal to 6.745 minus 1.2132 divided by 6.2426. So this data you can get easily from the property table. Then when you calculate it, you can get that X4 is equal to 0 0.8861. Okay, so now we have completed determine what we call the quality at state 4. Thus, we can calculate the enthalpy at state 4. So, H4 is equal to HF4 plus X4 HFG4. So, put all the data, <coughs> sorry, based on what we call the property table. So, HF4 is equal to 384.44 plus 0.8861 minus 2278. So, we can get H4 is equal to 2402.98 kilojoule per kilogram. Okay. So, basically, we have completed determine the enthalpy for each state. We now have H1, we have H2, we have H3, and we have, sorry, we have H4. So, based on that one, we can calculate what we call the first one we may calculate the specific heat input to the cycle or there is a Q in. So Q in basically H3 minus H2. Okay, so H3 is equal to 3116.1 and H2 is equal to 387.47. Then we can get a specific heat input. This is smaller Q. Eh? If you want to use what we call uh, the Q dot, Okay, so Q dot, so basically this is equal to M dot. Okay, multiply by Q in. Okay, so this Q in is actually equal to this one. Okay, so now we can get that Q in is equal to 2728.63 kilojoule per kilogram. So, next we can calculate the specific heat loss from the cycle. So, similarly, Q out is equal to H4 minus H1. So, this is 2402.98 minus 384.44. You can get that Q out is equal to 2018.54 kilojoule per kilogram. So, uh, finally, we can determine what we call the thermal efficiency of this cycle. So, as we know or as I explained earlier, what we call the thermal efficiency of the cycle is basically just work net mine are divided by Q in. So, we know that the work net is basically Q in minus Q out then divided by Q in. So, if you want to rearrange, you can. If you don't want to rearrange, just put the value as I did. So, 2728.63 minus 2018.54 divided by 2728.63. What we have now is 0 0.2602 and normally we present the thermal efficiency in the form of percentage. Then it will become 26.02. 
percent. So this is how we solve what we call the problem of ideal Rankine cycle. So the key concept here is we need to have what we call the enthalpy for each state. So based on that one, we can calculate every parameter that required from the question. Okay, now we will learn about the second stage of the Rankine cycle, which is the deviation of the actual vapor power cycle from the idealized one. This is similar to the second stage of the Brighton cycle, where the actual vapor power cycle differ from the ideal Rankine cycle as a result of irreversibilities in the various components. Fluid friction and heat loss to the surrounding are two common sources of the irreversibilities. This is the deviation of actual vapor power cycle from the ideal Rankine cycle as shown as on the TS diagram here. So this is the TS diagram for the actual vapor power cycle. So as you can see from state 1 to state 2, so this is basically the irreversibilities in the pump and from state 2 to state 3, there is a what we call the pressure drop here. So this pressure drop is basically the pressure drop in the boiler and as you can see here, so this is from state 3 to state 4. This is the irreversibility in the turbine. And finally, from state 4 to state 1, so this is basically the pressure drop in the condenser. For this course, we only consider the effect of the pump and compressor to limit the complexity of the problem. As I mentioned in the previous video, anyhow, you are just the first year engineering student. So it is rational to simplify some situation to help you to focus on the concept of the cycle only. The effect of the pump and turbine irreversibilities on the ideal Rankine cycle is given in this TS diagram. So this is TS diagram that only consider what we call the first one, the irreversibilities in the pump and the second one, the irreversibility in the turbine. So the pressure drop in the boiler as well as the pressure drop in the condenser is neglected. So recall that the isentropic efficiency for the pump and the compressor is given as here. So this is efficiency of the pump, which is work isentropic pump divided by actual work of the pump. So based on what we call the TS diagram, okay, as you can see, this is what we call the new TS diagram for the actual vapor cycle. So we have what we call first one is state one. Number two, we have state 2S. The third one, we have state 2A. Then we have state 3, we have state 4S, and we have state 4A. So based on that one, what we call the isentropic efficiency of the pump is equal to H2S minus H1 divided by H2A, sorry, H2A minus H1. And similarly to the efficiency of the turbine, this is equal to work actual of the turbine divided by work actual of the pump. So this is H3 minus H4A divided by H3 minus H4S. So basically, this is we have derived in the chapter 4. So please recall your understanding for the isentropic efficiency of the pump and the turbine. So based on the chapter 4. So this is what we call the deviation of actual power cycle from idealized one in the Rankine cycle. This is sample problem 6.6. .6. This sample problem is to show you how to solve the problem regarding to the actual vapor cycle. So let us read the sample problem 6.6. .6. So in this sample problem, the question said, 
Consider a steam power plant that operate on a simple Rankine cycle. Please do remember that simple Rankine cycle means we have one boiler, one turbine, one condenser, and one pump. That is mean by the what we call the uh, simple Rankine cycle. So it has a net power produced of 45 megawatt. So that means the power output at the turbine is 45 megawatt. Okay, please remember the unit of watt is equal to joule per second. Then megawatt is equal to megajoule per second or 1000 kilojoule per second. Okay, it also said that steam enters the turbine at 7 megapascal and 500 degrees Celsius and it is cooled in the condenser at a pressure of 10 kilopascal by running cooling water from the lake through the tube to the condenser at a rate of 2000 kilogram per second with specific heat for cooling water is equal to 4.184 kilojoule per kilogram degree Celsius. So, the isentropic efficiency, okay, for the both turbine and pump are 87%. So, the question asks us, the first one, draw the schematic diagram for the cycle. So, this is basically number one. We have to draw the schematic diagram of the cycle. Number two, show the cycle on the TS diagram with respect to the saturation line. So, this is number two. We need to have a TS diagram and based on that, we have to determine the first one, the thermal efficiency of the cycle. The second one, the mass flow rate of the steam. And the third one is the temperature rise of the cooling water. Okay, so this is the question of the sample problem 6.6. Okay, based on the question, number one, we are asked to draw the schematic diagram of the cycle. So basically, this is what we call the simple uh, Rankine cycle. So simple Rankine cycle, we have what we call one pump, one boiler, and one turbine, and one condenser. So this condenser is using the water from the lake. So the water is pumping from the lake into what we call our condenser to cool down the system and goes back to the lake. So there are 2000 kilogram per second of water from the lake that inter enter into what we call our condenser. Okay, so uh, last question, we need to determine what is what we call the different temperature from the outlet to the inlet. So this is what we call the schematic diagram from the pump goes into the boiler and then goes into what we call our turbine and goes into what we call the uh, condenser and pump it back. Okay, so there is a, what we call, this is what we call mass flow rate of the system, M dot. Okay, so from this one, we can get what we call all the required data. So the data what we have here is basically, so we have uh, 2000 kilogram per second of water. Okay, that is pumping from the lake. <coughs> and then the thermal we produce 45 megawatt of uh, power. And the what we call condenser pressure is 10 kilopascal. The efficiency of the turbine is equal to 87%. Okay, so the boiler, so the fuel is added into the boiler and the air also added into the boiler. And then, of course, from the boiler, we have the exhaust gas. But the question did not ask us uh, yet what we call the fuel consumption of the fuel or for the boiler. And then uh, the steam enters at the turbine at 7 megapascal and 500 degrees Celsius. So basically it's entered at state number 3. Okay, so this is the required information from the what we call schematic diagram of the cycle. From this one, we can draw what we call the TS diagram as shown here. So this is the T and this is the S. Okay, so this is state number 1. It goes up to state 2S. So due to irreversibilities, there is a slightly change here. So this is state 2A and then it can go to the heat additional process. So to the state number 3 and then it will go into what we call the turbine. 
So this is state 4S and due to irreversibilities, it go to the state 4A and goes back into state number 1. So this is the TS diagram for the actual vapor cycle. Then uh, we can write what we call the given information to us. We have the uh, power output is equal to 45 kilowatt. So please remember power we have dot here. And then P3 is equal to 7 megapascal or 7000 kilopascal. Okay, T3 is equal to 500 degrees Celsius and P4 is equal to 10 kilopascal. And we have the what we call mass flow rate of the cooling water is equal to 2000 kilogram per second. This is from the lake for the uh, what we call a uh, condenser only. And then the specific heat for the cooling water is equal to 4.18 kilojoule per kilogram degree Celsius. And also both compressor and turbine have the efficiency of 87%. So, uh, as a uh, previous, uh, what we call example, we have to determine what we call the enthalpy for each state. So, now we have to go uh, one by one or state by state. So, first we go to state number one. So, the data we have is P1 is equal to 10 kilopascal. So, always assume state one at a saturated liquid. Then, based on the table A5, at 10 kilopascal, we have H1 is equal to HF is equal to 191.81 kilojoule per kilogram. So, also we have what we call the specific volume 1 is approximately is equal to specific volume at saturated liquid line. This is equal to 0 0.001010 meter cube per kilogram. So, we complete state number 1. Then we go to state 2S. So this is what we call isentropic state. So for the isentropic state, P2 is equal to 7000 kilopascal and S2 is equal to S1. So thus, the isentropic work output from this pump is equal to work pump in is equal to specific volume 1 multiplied by the pressure different P2 minus P1. So this is also equal to H2S minus H1. So, we can get the isentropic work of the pump is equal to 0 0.001010. So, this is the specific volume at state number 1. Multiply by 7000 minus 10, we can get the isentropic work of the pump is equal to 7.06 kilojoule per kilogram. So, then uh, we can go to state uh, 2A. So, this is the actual state. So, at state number 2. So, we have to use what we call the equation of the isentropic efficiency of the pump. So, we have derived this one. Isentropic efficiency of the pump is equal to isentropic work of the pump divided by uh, actual work of the pump. So, this is also equal to H2S minus H1 divided by H2A minus H1. Then we can rearrange for, for H2A. So H2A is equal to work isentropic divided by efficiency of the pump plus H1. So we can get 7.06. We already calculated 7.06 here. So, so this is 7.06 here. We, can, we already calculated that. Then this is divided by 0 0.87. So this is the efficiency of the pump plus 191.81 so this is basically h1 so we can get h2a is equal to 199.92 kilojoule per kilogram so completed state 2a then we can go to state uh, 3 so at state 3 we know that it is a uh, p3 is equal to 7000 kilopascal t3 is equal to 500 degrees celsius so based on table A5 at 7,000 kilopascal, T saturation at uh, 7,000 kilopascal is lower than T3, then state 3 is in superheated region. So for this case, you have checked. So some of, of the question, so state 3 is not in superheated, it's still in the mixture. So we have to make sure that what we call which state, state number 3, uh, fall in.
Okay, so we now we now know that state number three is at what we call at the superheated. Then we can refer to the table superheated of table A6. So we can get the data from that one at a uh, 7,000 kilopascal and 500 degrees Celsius. So H3 is equal to three four one one point four kilojoule per kilogram, and we also can take what we call S3 is equal to six point eight kilojoule per kilo. Gram. So this is how we what we call do what we call the part of actual vapor cycle, which is consists of what we call state one, state two s, state two a, and state three. The next state is we have to go for the state four s. So we know that at state four s, the P four is equal to ten kilopascal. And S4 is equal to S3 is equal to 6.8 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. So uh, from table A5 at 10 kilopascal, we found that SF4 is smaller than S4 is smaller than SFG. Thus, it is fall under the category of mixture. That means state 4S is in the mixture region. So, if it fall in the mixture region, then we have to determine the quality at state 4. So, similarly, X4 is equal to S4 minus SF4 divided by SFG4. This is equal to 6.8 minus 0 0.6942 divided by 7.4996. So, all the data, basically, we can get from the table. So, from this one, we can calculate the X4 as 0.8201. So, thus, we can calculate HS4 as HF4 uh, plus X4 times HFG4. So, HF4 is equal to 191.81 plus X4 is equal to 0 0.8201 and HFG4 is equal to 2392.1 upon calculation we can get that h uh, sorry h4s is equal to 219 uh, sorry 53.6 kJ per kilogram then we can proceed to the state 4a so state 4a is the actual state so basically for the actual state <coughs> sorry we can calculate based on the isentropic efficiency of the turbine so isentropy is simply of the turbine is basically work actual of the turbine divided by isentropic work of the turbine or is also equal to H3 minus H4A divided by H3 minus H4S. So we can rearrange this equation. We can get H4A is equal to H3 minus efficiency of the turbine multiplied by H3 minus H4S. So put all uh, the, uh, the required information. So H3 is equal to three four one one point four minus what we call the efficiency of the turbine is equal to 0 0.87 multiplied by the H3 three four one one point four minus H4S two one five three point six. So now we can get the actual uh, entropy uh, at state four is equal to. 2317.1 kilojoule per kilogram. So now we already calculated all the enthalpy for each state. So which are state 1, state 2S, state 2A, state 3, state 4S and state 4A. So after that we can calculate what we call the specific heat input to the cycle, so Q in is equal to H3 minus H2A. So now, for the actual vapor cycle, so we have to use what we call the actual uh, state in order to calculate the Q in and the actual work output. So this is equal to 3411.4 minus 199.92. So then we can get Q in is equal to 3211.5 kilojoule per kilogram. Then we also can calculate what we call the specific heat loss from the cycle. So this is what we call we can calculate the Q out. So the Q out is basically is equal to 
QR is equal to H4A minus H1. Please do remember I uh, what we call repeat it. We have we have to use what we call the actual value rather than the isentropic value. So H4A is equal to 2317.1 minus 191.81. So we can get the Q out is equal to 2125.3 kilojoule per kilogram. So then we can calculate the net work output for the cycle. We know that the work net output is equal to Q in minus Q out. So Q in, we have 3211.5 and Q out is equal to 2125.3. Then the work net output is equal to 1086.2 kilojoule per kilogram. So finally, we can calculate what we call the thermal efficiency of the cycle. So the thermal efficiency of the cycle is equal to work net divided by Q in. So we already calculate the work net and we already calculate the work in. Uh, sorry, Q in. So work net is equal to 1086.2 divided by 3211.5. Then we can get the thermal efficiency is equal to 0.338 or in the percent, we can get it as a 33.8%. So this is how we solve the problem. So what... Uh, however, the key concept is the enthalpy for each step. So after that, we can determine the mass flow rate of the steam in the cycle. So basically, it is based on the net power and specific work. Okay, the mass flow rate is calculated as, okay, mass flow rate is equal to uh, power or W dot net. Eh? So, W dot net, this is power, power, so dot mean kilojoule per second. And then work net is kilojoule per kilogram. So, what we can do is we can cancel kilojoule over kilojoule uh, and then kilogram up there. So, what we call, uh, finally, we can get the unit of mass flow rate is kilogram per second. So, we already have uh, the question given to us that uh, work net is 45 megajoule. 45 megajoule is actually is 45,000 kilojoule per second. So, basically... Uh, 45,000 divided by 1086.2. This is work net that we have calculated before. So we can get that the mass flow rate is equal to 41.43, sorry, 41.43 kilogram of water per second that flowing inside the system. Okay. All right. And finally, we can calculate what we call uh, the temperature rise of the cooling water. Okay, so this is we have to use based on the rate of heat rejection. So based on the QR rate of the heat rejection, Q dot out is equal to M dot multiplied by Q out. So we already have what we call the Q out and we already calculated the M dot of the system as 41.43 so we can get what we call the rate of heat rejection from the system is equal to 88051.18 kilowatt okay knowing that q dot r is equal to q dot condenser okay so this 8805.18 is equal to Q dot condenser where Q dot condenser the formula is M dot cooling water multiplied by calorific value okay CCW of the cooling water multiplied by delta T so we if we rearrange this equation we can get that delta T is equal to Okay, 88051, which is a point 0.8, which is the Q a dot condenser divided by 2000. 2000 is equal to mass flow rate of the cooling water from the lake multiplied by 4.18. So this is what we call CC. W, then we can get what we call the uh, temperature rise of the cooling water is equal to 10.52 degree Celsius. So this is the answer for the question number three. Sorry, C, that regarding to the cooling water of the system. So this is how we solve the problem of actual vapor cycle. 
This is the practice problem 6.5 regarding to the ideal and actual Rankine cycle for the gas turbine engine. Please complete this practice problem. Practice will make you understand better for this subject. So you can ask me in the WhatsApp group if you have any query about this practice problem. This is uh, another question from the practice problem 6.5. So I, I recommend you to complete all these questions. So you may do it uh, individual or it is recommended for you to do in a group. Based on two sample problems given earlier, the efficiency of the ideal and actual Rankine cycle is approximately around 30%. Thus, effort have been made by the engineers to increase the efficiency of the Rankine cycles by imposing some modification to the basic cycle. Note that the basic Rankine cycle only consists of one pump, one boiler, one turbine, and one condenser. In general, the basic idea behind all the modifications that have been made to the Rankine cycle is to increase the thermal efficiency of the power cycle is the same. It is regarded to the temperature, not the pressure. There are two principles of doing this. The first one is to increase the average temperature at which heat is transferred to the working fluid in the boiler. If we refer to the TS diagram of the Rankine cycle, this is the point out at state 2 to state 3, which is the constant pressure heat addition process. The second principle is referring to the state 4 to 1, which is decreasing the average temperature at which heat is rejected from the working fluid in the condenser. Based on this principle, the engineer have made three methods to increase the efficiency of the Rankine cycle. The first method is lowering the condenser pressure. This is to take the advantage of the increased efficiency at low pressure for the condenser. The condenser of the steam power plant usually operate very well below the atmospheric pressure. There is a lower limit to this pressure depending on the temperature of the cooling medium. However, by using this method, there is, there is a side effect from this method. Lowering the condenser pressure will increase the moisture content of the steam at the final stage of the turbine. Thus, the moisture content will form the liquid droplet and this liquid droplet will heat on the turbine blade that will causing the erosion and wear to the turbine blade. That is the lower limit of the condenser pressure. The TS diagram for this method is shown here. So, so this is the TS diagram on how we are going to increase the efficiency of the Rankine cycle by lowering the condenser pressure. So if you can see here, so this is what we call the normal pressure at the condenser so now we lower what we call the condenser pressure when we lower the condenser pressure what we have here so this is what we call the saturated vapor line and this is the mixture so that when we talk about mixture we have what we call water droplet so this water droplet will become bigger so when it moves what we call far away from the saturated uh, vapor line so that is the problem although we can get more work net here so that is what we call the advantage and disadvantage of using the lowering the condenser pressure the second method to increase the efficiency of the Rankine cycle is to increase the maximum temperature to the maximum limit. This method is also known as superheating the steam to high temperature. By using this method, both 
the network and heat input increase as a result of superheating the steam to a higher temperature. The overall effect is an increase in thermal efficiency since the average temperature at which heat is added increases. Superheating the steam to a high temperature also would decrease the moisture content of the steam at the turbine exit, which is desirable to avoid the erosion and wear to the turbine blade. However, the temperature at which the superheating steam can reach is limited by metallurgical consideration. This is due to the material properties of the turbine blade. We know that the metal will be melt at certain temperature. Thus, if we increase the temperature of the superheated steam above the temperature of the blade will be melted, and then the turbine blade obviously will be met. Presently, the highest steam temperature allowed at the turbine inlet is about 620 degrees Celsius. The TS diagram for this method is showing here. So this is the TS diagram of the superheating the steam to the high temperature. Let's say this is our original, what we call temperature. So now we can increase what we call or we can increase the temperature of the superheating to its limit. Okay, as you can see here, so uh, ideally or originally when the temperature as this state so state 4 will fall here so that means the moisture content is high so when we increase what we call the heating temperature it will goes into the 3 prime from this 3 prime what we call we can increase the state 4 prime so that the state 4 uh, prime is basically near to the uh, saturated vapor line then it will reduce what we call the moisture content so, however, we cannot increase what we call the temperature to reheat as uh, we like because due to the method, uh, metallurgical consideration. So, in this case, we can get extra work net here that is in the color purple. The third method to increase the efficiency of the Rankine cycle is by increasing the boiler pressure. When we increase the boiler pressure, then we can reduce the heat input to the cycle. This condition can be easily understand by referring to this TS diagram. So as you can see and on this TS diagram, so this is what we call the original line of the pressure in our boiler and its limit for to this T maximum. Then if we increase the pressure in the boiler, so by increase the pressure by using pump, so this is the increase pressure in the boiler. So what we have here is we can get what we call extra work output here. So please do remember, so the work, uh, sorry, um, the area under the process curve is equal to what we call the work net of the system. However, if we increase what we call the uh, temperature in the boiler, then state 3 is moved to the left of the cycle. When state 3 moves to the left of the cycle, state 4 also will move to the left of the cycle. So thus what we call it will increase back what we call the moisture content. So this is what we call the advantage and disadvantage. So the advantage is, is you can uh, look at here. So the distance between here to here is lower as you compare from the distance from here to here. So this is basically the Q in. So in the case of you increase what we call the Q in, sorry, increase the pressure. So that means you can reduce what we call the heat input to the system. So there is the advantage and disadvantage of using the increase of the boiler pressure. 
However, uh, for a fixed uh, turbine in lab temperature, due to limitation of by the metallurgical consideration, the cycle uh, basically we shift to the left. Okay, so normally uh, in order to solve this problem, we will use what we call uh, reheating system to the system uh, in order to reduce the moisture content. Today, many modern steam power plant is using this method and they are operated above the supercritical pressure which is P is higher than 22.04 MPa and they are called supercritical Rankine cycle. So the TS diagram of the supercritical Rankine cycle is given here. So this is what we call supercritical Rankine cycle. If you can see here, so it will pump from state 1 to state 2. Then it will pump above the supercritical pressure. So until state here. And it will go down here. So this is what we call we get more work output from the system. Okay, by using a supercritical Rankine cycle, the thermal efficiency have been increased to about 40% for the fossil fuel plant and 34% for the nuclear power plant. So that, how can we take an advantage of increased efficiency at higher boiler pressure without facing the problem of accessing moisture at the final stage of the turbine? So, the answer is by superheating the steam to very high temperature, which is up to the limit of the metallurgical ability, and expand the steam in the turbine in two stages by using reheat between the turbine. The schematic diagram of this system, or we call it the reheat Rankine cycle, is illustrated here. So this is the way how we increase the superheated to the maximum level and reheat the steam by using two uh, turbine. As you can see here, it start from state number one. From state number one, the water is pumped to increase the pressure to state number two. Then it will goes into the boiler. It will change the phase from liquid to superheated to the maximum temperature that we can go into the system. Then it will go to the first turbine. The first turbine we call it as high pressure turbine. So this turbine will produce what we call the work output. Then the exit of the turbine, it goes back into what we call the boiler. Then what we call, this is what we call reheater. That means we reheat again. So it goes into what we call reheater. Then when it goes into the reheater and after that one, it goes what we call into the second turbine. So when it goes into the second turbine, now it will produce another power. Okay, so now we have two power. So one power from the high pressure turbine, the other power is from the low pressure turbine. Then after that, it goes to condenser and it will uh, recycle again. So this is what we call the schematic diagram of the ideal reheat Rankine cycle. So from this one, we can draw what we call the TS diagram. So this is the TS diagram of the reheat Rankine cycle. So from state 1 to state 2, it just what we call increase, okay, the pressure. And then from state 2 into the state 3, so where you can refer to this one, okay, at the boiler, okay, and then state 3 to state 4 for the first turbine, for the high pressure turbine. So this is refer to the high pressure turbine and then it will reheat again at the state, uh, sorry, this is, uh, okay, high pressure turbine 3 to 4 and it will reheat again here. So, reheat again in what we call reheater or put it back into what we call the boiler. And finally, it will release in the low pressure turbine. So, this is what we call low pressure turbine. 
then finally it will goes into what we call the condenser so uh, this is what we call the schematic diagram and the ts diagram of the reheat rankine cycle so if you can see here is it ideal so ideal mean s1 sorry ideal mean S1 is equal to S, S2. The other one is actual. So actual, this is what we call have 2A. And then we have here, all right, so this is 4A. And we have here 6A. Okay, so that is, if you have A, is become actual. So is uh, ideal, that means isentropic process only. Okay. Alright, so from that one, we can calculate what we call the Q-in. So Q-in, we have two now. We have the primary heat. So primary heat, what we call from the boiler. Okay, and then reheat. So this one is reheater. Okay, and then we know that from the TS diagram. So let me clear a little bit. Okay, little bit, we can clear this one. Okay. Alright, so the first one is basically Q primary. Q primary is basically from state 2 to state 3. So we have H3 minus H2 and reheater. So basically reheater is from here to here. So, this is reheating, then it becomes H5 minus H4. So, similarly, work turbine output, we have work turbine 1, which is high pressure turbine, and work turbine 2. So, from this one, we can get H3 minus H4 plus H5 minus H6. So, this is what we call the cycle improvement by using the reheat Rankine cycle. The single reheat in a modern power plant improve the cycle efficiency by 4 to 5% by increasing the average temperature at which heat is transferred to the steam. The average temperature during the reheat process can be increased by increasing the number of expansion and reheat stages. As the number of the stages is increased, the expansion and reheat processes approach and isothermal processes at the maximum temperature. The use of more than two reheat stages is not practical for the steam power plant. The theoretical improvement in the efficiency from the second reheat is about half of that which result from the single reheat. The reheat temperature are very close to equal to the turbine inlet temperature. So the optimum reheat pressure is about one fourth of the maximum cycle pressure. Then finally, the TS diagram provided here is illustrate on how reheating with multiple stage is being done. As you can see here, so if we can reheat, so. Uh, reheat number 1, reheat number 2, reheat number 3, reheat number 4, and reheat number 5. So that means the cycle will increase. It will provide the work output. However, the efficiency of the system is uh, going to reduce due to what we call more heat need to be added into the system. This is a sample problem 6.7. So, in this sample problem, I will explain to you how to solve the problem regarding to the ideal reheat Rankine cycle. Okay, first, let us read the question. So, the question asks us what we call, consider a steam power plant operating on the ideal reheat Rankine cycle. Steam enter the high pressure turbine at 15 megapascal and 600 degrees Celsius and is cons condensed in the condenser at a pressure of 10 kilopascal. If the moisture content of the steam at the exit of low pressure turbine is not to exceed 10.4%, so we have to determine the first one, the pressure at which the steam should be reheated 
and the thermal efficiency of the cycle. So we also have to assume the steam is reheat to the inlet temperature at the high pressure turbine. So this is what we call the schematic diagram. So state number one before the pump, it will pump, increase the pressure to state number two and it will go into the boiler to state number three and it goes to the first uh, high pressure turbine state number four. And then it will reheat back in the boiler to the state number five. Okay, and then it will go back into what we call low pressure turbine and finally it will go down and go to the condenser. From this one, because this is what we call just ideal reheat Rankine cycle. So for the TS diagram, so basically this is state number one goes to state number two, goes to state number three, four, five, and six. So six going back to number one. So basically, this is what we call the TS diagram of the ideal reheat Rankine cycle. As usual, in order to solve the problem of thermodynamic, any system, you talk about auto cycle, diesel cycle, Brighton cycle, so we have what we call gather the information given to us. So in this case, we have what we call P3 is equal to 15 megapascal or 15,000 kilopascal. T3 is equal to T5, is equal to 600 degrees Celsius. P6 is equal to P1 is equal to 10 kilopascal. And the question also state that X6, okay, moisture con uh, content, oh, sorry, the quality is 1 minus 0. Uh, 0.104. That means the moisture content not to exceed 10.4%. So this is equal to 0. 0.896. So, uh, first one, we have to solve what we call the pressure at which the steam should be reheated. Okay, so uh, the pressure that uh, the reheat pressure is determined from the requirement that the entropy at state 5 and state 6 be the same. So, we have to know based on TS diagram in order to determine the pressure at uh, the steam should be reheat so s5 is equal to s6 so from this one we have to refer to the state one first so we know that at state one uh, sorry state six so at state six we know that p6 is equal to 10 kilopascal and we know that at six is equal to 0 0.896 which is not to exceed 10.5 percent of the moisture content that is the limit so we cannot exceed that one so, uh, S6 is equal to SF6 plus X6 multiplied by SF6. So, we can determine S6 is equal to 0 0.6492 plus 0 0.896 multiplied by 7.4996. This is what we call this data. Basically, you can get at the uh, 10 kilopascal. So based on this one, so we can calculate S6 is equal to 7.3688 kilojoule per kilogram. So also we can calculate the enthalpy at state 6. So this is equal to HF6 is equal to X6 multiplied by HFG, uh, sorry, HFG6. So similarly, the data you can get at uh, pressure 10.5 kilopascal at table A5. So this is equal to 191.81 plus 0 0.896 multiplied by 2392.1. So you should get the H6 is equal to 2335.1 kilojoule per kilogram. So we start at state number 6 because we want to solve the problem of the pressure at which the steam should be reheated first. So we know that it must be uh, S5 must equal to S6. After that, we have to move on to the state number 5. 
So at state number 5, we have the temperature is 600 degrees Celsius and we have already calculated that S6 where S6 is equal to 7,388 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin and this is equal to S5 as I mentioned earlier. So based on the table A4, we found that the T5 is higher than 3, sorry, T critical. So that means T uh, state 5 is in the superheated region. So after we found that the state 5 is in the superheated region, then we can go to the table A6 at 600 degrees Celsius. The nearest at higher value of entropy is, so T is equal to 600 degrees Celsius, S is equal to 7.306 kilojoule per kilogram. So if you compare this value, S is equal to 7.3706, it is basically higher than what we call S6 is equal to S 7.3688 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Based on this one, we found that the pressure is equal to 4 megapascal. So this is based on the table A6. Okay, so to prevent the moisture content of the steam at state 6 not to exceed 10.4%, then the steam should be reheated at a pressure of 4 megapascal or lower. So this is basically the answer for what we call the pressure that the steam should be reheated. So if we take that P is equal to 4.5 megapascal, T is equal to 600 degrees Celsius. Then we found that S is equal to 7.3127. If you compare this value, S is equal to 73127, it is basically okay, lower than S6. So when it is lower than S6, basically the moisture content would exceed 10.4%. So basically the nearest what we call uh, entropy is equal to S is equal to 7.3706 which is at 4 megapascal. So that is the pressure should be reheat in this case. Okay, so now we complete what we call the first question. So we move on to the second question. So the second question is to determine the thermal efficiency, then we need to know the enthalpies at all other states. So, so far we already know what we call the enthalpy at state Six only okay all right so we go for the state one so state one p1 is equal to 10 kilopascal this is saturated liquid so basically this is repeating so this is the third example it is repeat what we call uh, state number one is the same thing so we have a pressure and we have saturated liquid so from this one we are, we have h1 is equal to approximately hf1 at uh, is equal to 191.81 kilojoule per kilogram then we have specific volume 1, approximately specific volume at saturated liquid line. This is equal to 0 0.00101 meter cube per kilogram. Next, we go to state number 2. Similarly, we have 15 megapascal, which is equal to 1000, uh, sorry, this is 15,000 15, kilopascal. This is wrong. So this is another zero here. 50,000 kilopascal and we do have what we call S1 is equal to S2. Then the isentropic work of the pump, we can calculate work isentropic pump is equal to specific volume 1 multiplied by the pressure different P2 minus P1. This is also equal to H2 minus H1. So we know that specific volume 1 is equal to 0 0.00101 multiplied by P2. P2 is 15,000 kilopascal minus P1 is equal to 10 kilopascal. Then we can get isentropic work is equal to, for the pump, is equal to 15.14 kilojoule per kilogram. Then the enthalpy at state 2 is equal to H2 is equal to work isentropic pump 
plus h1 so basically this is just rearrange this equation so you can get what we call h2 so uh, insert all the required information isentropic work uh, for the pump is equal to 15.14 h1 is equal to 191.8 then we can get h2 is equal to 206.95 kilojoule per kilogram okay complete state number two so this is what we call the ideal we don't have what we call state 2a okay we proceed now for the state number three so at the state three pressure is equal to 15 megapascal and t3 is equal to 600 degrees celsius based on table a5 at 15,000 kilopascal t3 is higher than t saturation then state 3 is in superheated region okay so we know this is uh, superheated we refer directly to table a6 then we can get h3 is equal to 3583.1 and s3 is equal to 6.6796 kilojoule per kilogram kelvin please do remember so uh, at table a6 we refer to the 15 uh, megapascal and 600 degrees celsius in order to get the data of the enthalpy and entropy Okay, now we proceed with the state number 4. At state number 4, P4 is equal to 4 megapascal. We have calculated earlier at uh, uh, number A. So, S3 is equal to S4 is equal to 6.6796 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. So, from table A5 at 4 megapascal, uh, S4 is higher than SG, then it falls under the superheated region. So, if it is superheated region, we can refer directly to the table A6 and 4 megapascal and by using interpolation. So, this is the interpolation that we have to meet. So, H4. So, now we can rearrange from this table. So, we can get that H4 minus 3093.3 divided by 3214.5 minus 3093.3 is equal to 6.6796 minus 6.58. 43 divided by 6.7714 minus 6.5843 and finally we can get what we call the value of h4 is equal to uh, 3155.03 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin, sorry kilojoule per kilogram so this is what we call the enthalpy at state number four Okay, so now basically we have what we call all the what we call the value required. So then we can calculate the total specific heat input to the cycle. So Q in is equal to H3 minus H2. So plus H5 minus H4. Put the required information. So we can get Q in is equal to 3896.1. And the specific heat rejection from the cycle, which is H6 minus H1, this is equal to 2335.1 minus 191.81. We can get that Q out is equal to 2143.3 kilojoule per kilogram. Okay, so now we can calculate the Q in and Q out based on what we call the data we have for the um, entropy, uh, enthalpies for each state. Based on that, we can determine the thermal efficiency of the cycle. So, similar equation, thermal efficiency work net divided by Q in is equal to Q in minus Q out divided by Q in. Rearrange this equation, 1 minus Q out over Q in. So, from this equation, we can get 1 minus 2143.3 divided by 3896.1. So, what we get is we get uh, thermal efficiency is equal to 0 0.4499. This is approximately equal to, uh, we can convert it into the percentage as 45%. So, this is how we do what we call, we solve the problem of ideal reheat Rankine cycle. In principle, basically, we need to determine the enthalpy, what we call, of all the required state. This is the practice problem 6.6 .6 regarding to the reheat Rankine cycle for the gas turbine engine. Please complete this practice problem. 
as uh, we know that the practice will make you understand better for the subject so you always can ask me in the whatsapp group if you have any query or any question regarding to this practice problem okay now we move on to the next method to increase the efficiency of the Rankine cycle which is known as the regenerative Rankine cycle Referring to the TS diagram of the Rankine cycle provided here, the heat is transferred to the working fluid during the process of 2 to 2 prime at a relatively low temperature. Actually, in this process, the working fluid is in the compressed liquid phase. Thus, the heat added into this process is used to change the phase of the water from the compressed liquid to the mixture phase. This condition has lowered the average heat addition temperature and thus the cycle efficiency. In the Rankine cycle, we know that the exit steam after the expansion in the turbine is still hot or have some energy. So, in order to help the water changing its phase from compressed liquid to mixture quickly, some part of the steam from the exit of the turbine will be connected to the one component named feed water. Or, in another word, in steam power plant, steam is extracted from the turbine at the various point. This steam which could have produced more work by expanding further in the turbine is used to heat up the feed water instead. The device where the feed water is heated by regeneration is called a regenerator or feed water heater. Basically, the feed water heater is similar to the regeneration in the Breton cycle where the hot uh, exhaust gas is uh, used to heat up what we call the compressed air. Similar concept is happened with the feed water heater where the hot uh, steam from the exit of the turbine is extracted, goes into the feed water and it will heat up what we call the uh, water inside the system after it is pumping before heat addition is imposed to the water. A feed water heater is basically a heat exchanger where heat is transferred from the steam to the feed water either by mixing the two fluid stream which is called the open feed water heater or without mixing them, which is known as closed feed water heater. Okay, let us learn a little bit about these two types of feed water heater. An open or also known as direct contact feed water heater is basically just a mixing chamber. Therefore, the hot steam extracted from the turbine will mix with the cool feed water heater that goes out from the pump. This is simply like we learned the mixing chamber in chapter 3. Thus, we need to calculate the mass fraction between the hot stream of the steam from the turbine and cool water from the pump. Ideally, the mixture leaves the heater as a saturated liquid at the heater pressure. The schematic diagram illustrates the system of the open feed water heater. As you can see, the first one, okay, the water is pumped into the boiler and then, okay, the boiler does its job, convert the super, uh, sorry, convert the liquid into the superheated steam and goes to the turbine. And originally, after the turbine, it will go into what we call the condenser. However, for the open feed water heater, some part of the uh, steam that from the turbine exit will be extracted into the uh, open feed water heater. So this is what we call relatively hot. Okay, this is relatively hot 
turbine, sorry, hot steam. So now, okay, at exit of the condenser, the water is in saturated liquid or in the compressed liquid and it will pump. So originally from here, goes into here. So we need to put what we call the Q in. So Q in is equal to mass of the fuel time the uh, calorific value and time what we call the efficiency of the combustion so now we need to put more fuel in order to heat up sorry in order to heating up what we call the water after the pump into what we call superheated before it goes into the turbine. However, since we have extract some of the heat from the what we call turbine, it goes to the open feed water heater. So after the first pump, so the cool water goes here. So then it will mix with hot water. So then this is uh, what uh, what we call the uh, water exit from the open feed water heater is relatively high so that we only need what we call to heat up what we call our uh, we can reduce the usage of the mass of the fuel based on that we can draw what we call the TS diagram so this is the TS diagram okay so now so this is from state number one, pump to state number two, and then from two to three. So this is basically come from the feed water heater. So this one is come from the uh, feed water heater from state two to state three. So the heating process is come from the uh, open feed water heater. So after that, the process is similar. So we can increase what we call, we can get the new what we call or the net what we call work output here. Okay, this is how we do for the open feed water heater. Another type of feed water heater frequently used in the steam power plant is the closed feed water heater. In the closed feed water heater, heat is transferred from the extracted steam to the feed water without any mixing process taking place. The closed feed water heater is actually just a heat exchanger so that the stream does not mix with other in the closed feed water heater. They only exchange heat in the closed feed water heater as the operational of the heat exchanger. Thus, the two stream now can be at different pressures since they do not mix to each other so that the open feed water heater is using the mixing chamber and the closed feed water heater is using the uh, heat exchanger. The schematic diagram of the closed feed water heater is shown in this diagram as you can see. Okay. So this is originally after the pump. So after the pump, it goes to the what we call closed feed water heater. And then there are no mixing here. Okay, only changing what we call the heat. And then after that, it go to the another mixing chamber. So it goes to second pump, go to here, go to the boiler and come back to the turbine. So what we have here is we extract some of the heat from the turbine goes into the what you call closed feed water heater so as for the ts diagram so this is the ts diagram it goes, goes from one to two and then this is up by itself uh, because of no mixing so this is different pressure that what we're talking about the rest are the, the same so this is what we call the extraction point so this is referred to this point so, that is what we call the closed feed water heater. The closed feed water heater are more complex because of the internal tubing network and thus they are more expensive. Heat transfer in the closed feed water heater is less effective since the two streams are not allowed to be in direct contact. However, closed feed water heater do not require a separate pump for each heater since the extracted steam and feed water can be at different pressure.
The open feed water heater are simple and inexpensive and have a good heat transfer characteristic. For each heater, however, a separate pump is required to handle the feed water heater. So therefore, most of the steam power plant use a combination of the open and closed feed water with sorry a uh, combination of the open and closed feed water heater like the schematic diagram given in this slide as you can see for this what we call schematic diagram we have open feed water heater here we have closed feed water heater here and another closed feed water heater and another closed so the arrangement is depend on the what we call the system itself you can arrange how many open feed water heater you want or closed feed water heater you want so basically the extraction uh, doesn't what we call concern about the power output because this is at the exit of the turbine so you can extract as many as what we call the uh, steam from the turbine as you like so uh, this is how we increase the efficiency of the Rankine cycle by using what we call regenerative heat recovery system so we have finished chapter 6 the thermal power plant with that basically we have completed this course mec 451 thermodynamic i do hope that you can understand this course based on the material that i have provided to you i am truly sorry that i could not provide you the material for this course any better finally i wish you all the best and please stay safe wherever you are. Wassalamu.